Excited to jump into this webinar with you, Barry, looking at the top 10 reasons why owning high cash value, whole life insurance in retirement makes good financial sense. Thank you guys for joining as you're jumping in. Barry, what can we expect today in this topic? Thanks, Steve. Our goal is to help you listening understand the many benefits of owning high cash value whole life insurance now and in retirement and to discover how you can grow your money guaranteed and tax-free while also having asset protection, permanent death benefit protection, and the ability to leave an amazing legacy. Before we jump into the topic, so anybody that's thinking about LERP, life insurance, retirement planning, um, any kind of retirement strategy, retirement tax bill, this webinar can help uh, sort of flesh that out, correct? Exactly. What is the criteria, Barry, for a properly structured high cash value whole life policy? And this is really key because we're not talking about traditional old style whole life. We're talking about the new high cash value properly structured policy. First criteria is the policy must be with a dividend paying mutual insurance company. It must be with a company in business for over a hundred years. The policy must have a term insurance writer. This is whole life, but by adding a term writer to the whole life, it actually makes the policy less expensive and more efficient to allow more cash value into the policy. Okay. And that's a key point, right? This thing about buying term invest the difference, there actually is term incorporated into this design. And what it allows then is a, a way to maximize more cash being put into the policy. Yep. The policy must also have a paid up additions writer. And this is huge because the PUA writer, this is what's turbocharging that cash value. So on every high cash value policy we design, we're always using PUA. We yep. want the least amount of your premium going into base and we want the maximum amount of your premium going into PUA. That's what's going to give the policy the high cash value growth. And it must be focused on high cash value growth. All right. Those are some pretty substantive criteria that you just went over. I think for somebody brand new, this is pretty important. A high cash value whole life operates best practice, right? By certain standards. So it's good that people are kind of thinking about this aspect of it, making sure they're working with a vetted expert. You got it. All right. So top 10, why owning whole life insurance in retirement makes good financial sense. I know this is important for people when they're thinking about retirement goals. Yep. We're going to get into the top 10 right now. Number one, by having a high cash value policy in your life and then having it throughout retirement, it allows you the freedom to spend other assets in retirement. I'll explain. Hmm. If you have a permanent death benefit, it's a permission slip for you to spend and enjoy all of your other money. Think about this. Someone that does have term insurance and their term insurance expires at age 65 or when they retire, now yeah. all the pressure is on their assets to perform. And unfortunately, now their assets become the life insurance in their life, which they yep. weren't really thinking about it that way. A permanent yep. life insurance policy says, hey, you got this death benefit that no matter when you pass away is going to go to your spouse or to your heirs or leave a legacy. You now have the freedom to spend all of your other assets and enjoy your own money that you worked hard for. Yeah. And Barry, so when maybe financial entertainers talk about self-funding, Right. I always thought about this in my estate planning and as a trust and estates attorney, people talk about self-funding. Extremely problematic, I think, to give that kind of advice because of what you just said. And expensive. Yep. If you're going to leave a million dollars behind in a permanent death benefit, that would have cost you pennies on the dollar to do. Whereas if you leave a million dollars behind in an IRA or a 401k or a brokerage mm. account, it was yep. a full million, right? It cost you that full million to leave that behind. Yeah. And not to mention all the restrictions with the qualified accounts, the IRAs and, and these kinds of things and people receiving it and then the tax complications and things like that, where you don't have that with the death benefit. You got it. Reason number two, 
You can increase social security benefits for yourself and others. The longer you wait to take social security, the more social security you get. By having a whole life policy with cash value, if you retire, but you don't want to start taking social security, you can use the cash value of the whole life policy for income. Once you get to that age that you want to start taking social security and you get the maximum payout, you can stop taking income from the policy. And now you have the income from social security. So it's a way for you to actually get more money in your future. Awesome. Number three, tax diversification and tax advantages. We talk all the time about the tax benefits of high cash value whole life. If done correctly, all the cash value growth, all the gains can come to you tax-free. There are some criteria to meet, but those gains can come to you tax-free. So think about this. Mm -hmm. If you have three buckets of money, tax-deferred, taxable, and tax-free, I'm going to guess that 10 out of 10 of you want tax-free money. But if you look at your own portfolio, how much tax-free money do you actually have? Probably very little, if any. Most of you out there have tax-deferred money and taxable money. What we help you with is growing money guaranteed and tax-free. So now you have this tax-free money in retirement that you take as income and you don't have to report it to the IRS. Right. And if people are following the traditional route, I mean, they're going to be very heavy on the taxable side, right, Barry? I mean, you think about the IRA and 401k emphasis and, the, you know, you, they sound great deferring taxes. However, down the road, you've got a tax heavy uh, scenario there. And what if taxes go up? Mm. Right. That's yep. another problem. Right. High potential for that to be the case. Yeah. And if you do have a tax free bucket of money, it would also allow you to take less money out of your qualified plans. So you could actually be in a lower tax bracket by having tax free money. My point <laughs> is the whole life insurance allows you to control more so your tax buckets because whatever you mm -hmm. take out of the whole life insurance policy, because you're not reporting it to the IRS, you may not have to take as much out of your other qualified account or your brokerage account for income. Yeah. So it gives you some discretion on controlling your tax brackets is what you're really saying. Correct. Yeah, who doesn't want control in retirement? Yep. Number four, asset allocation. Well, what do we mean by asset allocation? Because the policy grows guaranteed, you're always making money. That means that you could potentially take more risks with your other investments. Some people still want to stay in the market. Some people still want to be aggressive with their investments in retirement. But having this asset allocation, because the policy is not tied to the market, you're always making money. You're earning a guaranteed rate of return. You're earning an annual dividend. It could allow a person to be a little bit more aggressive elsewhere. However, having this in their portfolio not only gives them more diversification, but it's an asset class that frankly, most people don't have, but they want. They want guarantees. Mm -hmm. They want liquidity. They want tax-free. And this policy does that and much more. Yeah. And you've talked about guarantees a lot, very in terms of compounding as well, which is um, a, another exciting aspect of having guaranteed growth. It's huge because you can really only have true compound interest in a guaranteed product. Huh. You, you'll hear financial advisors talk often about compound interest, but if you're in a volatile market or a volatile stock or a volatile mutual fund, you can't really have true compounding. Because you can lose your gains, you can see those increases one year and the losses the next year. True compounding, Steve, can only happen when you have a guaranteed rate of return. That's exciting. Number five, cash reserves for emergencies. We've mentioned cash value in a whole life policy is liquid. You can borrow, depending on the company, 90 to 95% of your total cash value. And you only have to wait 30 days after the policy is in force. We're going to encourage people to wait a year or two or three to build up the cash. But if there were an emergency, you pick up the phone, you call the insurance company, 
They do a direct deposit in your bank account within three to seven days, no questions asked. They don't care what you need the money for. They're not putting you through an application process. There's no credit check. It's very easy to get money for emergencies. Right. And I would suggest that this is a major component of sort of the banking idea in IBC. Instead of having your emergency fund in a bank account, you really have it for all practical purposes inside your policies. Exactly. And you just mentioned IBC, the infinite banking concept, which we love. We do correctly. We help clients with infinite banking policies. Think about this. Yes, interest rates are higher right now. You can go to a bank and you can get two, three, maybe three and a half percent on a savings account, but it's taxable money and those interest rates aren't going to last forever. What if you could earn four to five percent tax free in your policy and the cash was liquid? So that's the comparison we're kind of making today. We've seen interest rates on savings accounts as low as 0.001% before. We're not there today, but the fact of the matter, because you get a guaranteed rate of return in a policy and a dividend, yes, storing cash in a policy would be better than storing a bunch of cash in a bank account. Well, and I'll just add to that, Barry. The one thing is from a, you know, as a, as a legal expert myself, the, the one thing that people always miss is that a policy is a more secure place to have cash because of asset protection laws and how easy it is for creditors or whatever to access bank accounts. I mean, a bank account is just a very vulnerable asset and people just don't think about that or they don't want to or they don't realize it. And there's a great state protection article on the insurance and estates website. There's a map Mm -hmm. of the United States for those listening. You can click on your state on the map and you can see what kind of protection you have with the high cash value whole life. Most states allow you protection from creditors, lawsuits, bankruptcy. It's a very safe place to store cash. Yep. And the inside um, information on that is that, you know, other kinds of qualified accounts have some protections as well, because arguably the powers that be don't want to have creditors come in and seize those qualified account assets because eventually the, you know, the IRS wants the taxes on those. So, but this is your reserve in a policy where you have tax-free income down the road. You have protections there, so you have the best of all worlds. Bank accounts, it's a, just a, it's, it's very vulnerable. True. Number six, no required minimum distributions or RMDs. This is huge. People today mm-hmm. at the age of 73, if they have a qualified plan, are forced to take the required minimum distribution. And if they don't, they're gonna pay the tax and the penalty, which Mm. is about 25% right now. Because the policy has no required minimum distributions, if you get to 70, 73, 75, 80, you're not forced to take out the income. You can, it's a liquid, you can do what you want. But I love this aspect of a policy because once again, We're not having government control here forcing our hand to take income that maybe we don't need. Yeah. And I I think you may have mentioned it, Barry, but that those RMDs can then force people into a higher tax bracket. So thus the need for you you mentioned diversification, uh, tax diversification. So just kind of looking back at that. Right. Because then, you know, if you diversify, then maybe you're not going to be in as high of a tax bracket down the road. And that's going to be a huge net gain in and of itself. Yep, sure thing. Number seven, living benefit riders for when life happens. And Steve, life Mm -hmm. happens. Um, Mm -hmm. I've had clients that have had chronic illness, critical illnesses, premature passing. These living benefit riders allow someone to access their death benefit while they're alive. Meaning, Mm -hmm. let's say you had a critical illness or you get dementia or a chronic illness or a terminal illness and you've got 12 months to live. Mm -hmm. The life insurance company gives these riders to you for free. Now, you do have to qualify. Riders are free. There's no cost. And by allowing you to access your own death benefit while you're alive, you can have a higher quality of life. You have funds there that could help you through a very difficult time. It's a very powerful benefit when you look at the living aspects of the actual policy. It is life insurance, 
it's a death benefit as well, but we're talking about living benefits. Use your death benefit while you're alive. Right. And I'll just add to that, Barry, the, the, the long-term care area is huge. There's a huge concern around it for anybody that's hasn't thought about this maybe, or has done a little research uh, for chronic conditions, your, you know, Medicare and health insurance is not going to cover it. Right. So you have long-term care and, and a lot of the, the products have, you know, long-term care benefits is one of these living benefits. So that's a huge addition to everything else. It is. And just, I'm going to pause for a minute here. Yep. I'm talking about one product here, Steve, this one high cash value whole life product is giving mm. all these benefits. Mm. I've been this now gotcha. for nearly 24 years in my 24 years, and I'm an investor and I own real estate. I've seen a lot of things out there in 24 years in my career. Mm. I haven't seen anything better than a high cash value whole life insurance policy. So we're scratching the surface today, benefit mm. after benefit after benefit in one product. And by adding this to your portfolio, it will give you more efficiency in your entire portfolio. Yeah, Barry, and you're you're really highlighting a lot of the things that drew me to this this asset as an estate planner as well. So um, you had a different experience coming from the financial community, but just as an estate planner, I, this really resonated for me. Just what people can get when they're incorporating this asset into their uh, plan. Love it. So glad we've both had those individual experiences to be where we are today. Yeah. Yep. It's exciting. Number eight, supplement to college savings funds. The big popular way to save for college today is a 529 plan. I don't recommend them. And here's why. The 529 comes with market volatility and limits on how you can use the money. So they're very popular. And Wall Street and financial advisors tell you to get a 529 plan for your kids. But what if you have a child that's ready to go to college and decides they don't want to? They're an entrepreneur. They've got a free spirit. They want to start a business, whatever the case might be. If you take money out of a 529 and it's not used for education, you're going to pay the tax. You're going to pay the penalties. Whereas in a high cash value whole life policy, the cash is liquid, penalty free, and you can use the money for whatever you want. Yeah, you have multi-purposes that can be ut utilized at any time. So uh, it certainly allows for the changing circumstances of life in a much more favorable way uh, versus the you know just the 529. And what if your child is ready to go to college, does want to go to college, and the market is down 20%? and your portfolio has lost money, do you really want to be taking money out of the 529 and realize those losses? The point mm -hmm. here, Steve, is there's really no control in a 529. It's all subject to market volatility, potential taxation or fees if not used correctly. And it's very pigeonholed. You've got to use it basically for one thing. Yeah, and really you could, you could suggest strongly contend, whatever, that um, same issues exist for the 529s that do with traditional retirement accounts. You're limiting to those assets. For lack of a better way to put it, Barry, who thought it would be a great idea necessarily to park all of these important planning concerns in a volatile, potentially volatile account? It does seem peculiar. When you say it like that, <laughs> face value, it does seem really peculiar. Mm -hmm. I think that we've been uh, tricked or skewed a little bit in our thinking when you mm -hmm. say, you know, if I bring an investment to you and I'm going to tell you, you're going to take all the risk, you're going to put up all the money. I'm not going to tell you what the future taxes are going to be on that investment. At mm -hmm. face value, most people would say, I'm never going to do that. But mm -hmm. in fact, what I just shared is what most Americans are doing in these qualified plans that you're suggesting. Yeah, but guess what? A lot of these qualified plans, what did they replace historically, either pensions or really this kind of a product of mutual whole life? That's exactly right. Number nine, potentially there are no contribution limits, meaning like today you can put 20 grand, 22,000 into your 401k. With the high cash value whole life policy, we say potentially no contribution limits. 
it does depend on your income, but an insurance company, if you're earning a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, you can dump 50 grand a year into the policy and a first year lump sum of two to 300,000. You can't do that in your 401k or qualified plan. So we love this because when people really understand the benefits of high cash value whole life, they want it and they get excited about, man, I need to get as much money into this as quickly as possible to begin to grow money guaranteed and earn those dividends. Yeah. And, and you're bringing up some logistical points. There might be people that wonder, and we had that this question before, can I roll my money into a product like this? And, and of course you can't because it's not a qualified. If you did, then you'd have the same problems. Right. I mean, that's a good way to maybe look at it. It's not this isn't a qualified account. You ne- you wouldn't want it to be. So if people want to get into this asset, you know, there may be a, some math to be done about converting some of the qualified funds. And I've helped a lot of clients do that, Steve. We're yep. going to be smart about it. We don't want people paying more tax than they should. But it is possible to move 401k or IRA money or brokerage account money to these policies. We just need to be smart about it. Yep. Number 10, here we are as we wrap up the top 10 reasons why owning whole life insurance in retirement makes good financial sense. Mm -hmm. No pre-age 59 and a half 10% penalty. And I love this because once again, as you invest money in the market through a 401k or an IRA, a qualified plan, TSP, 457, 403b, right? Any qualified plan, mm-hmm. you can't take out your money without paying a 10% penalty and the tax. In these policies, right. there is no requirement there. There's no restriction there. So people truly mm-hmm. do have full liquidity. 30 days after the policy is enforced, this becomes their own bank. And that's what we discussed earlier briefly about the infinite banking concept that people can become their own bank, use their Mm -hmm. money as they wish without penalty, without tax. Yep. That's, that's a perfect way to sort of summarize the the accuracy and also dispel any, you know, sort of myths about your being your own banker. There's immediate access. You've got all these advantages. Think about the 59 and a half paying, you know, the current tax rates, which would likely be higher than they are now down the road, plus the 10%. That's a pretty, that's potentially a pretty difficult hit if that money's needed. It is. And that money's taken right off the top. Hmm. The government wants you to keep your money there. They want to tax you later in life where taxes are potentially going to be higher. Hmm. The high cash value whole life policy allows you more freedom. It allows you more control. It allows you to be your own bank. It allows you to have a permanent death benefit. And Steve, these are the top 10 reasons why owning whole life in retirement make good financial sense. But guess what? There are many, many more benefits than this. And there are other webinars we've done to talk about those other benefits. Yep. We talk a little more detail about things like paid up additions, talk about policy loans, which you're touching on here, but we can, we've got some other education and talking about those in detail. But this is a good one that we've needed to address is just really how to think about this for retirement planning. Yep. Great stuff, Barry. Appreciate you walking through that. It's always exciting to flesh out these ideas for anybody that has either been looking into this or brand new. Uh, If you're thinking about looking into incorporating this powerful asset to your retirement plan, Wherever you're watching, there should be a link below that you can click on to access Barry's calendar for next steps uh, for a personal look at your situation. That's always positive uh, because it's going to be much more detailed for you. So I encourage you to do that. Barry, thanks again. Great topic. We'll be rolling more out in the future, guys. Subscribe, like if uh, if you're on YouTube. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, thanks, Barry. 